Basil Chapman on the line today. Basil, are you there? Yes, I am, Larry, and thank you very much for doing my show yesterday morning. I appreciate <laughs> it very much. Well, it was a pleasure. I mean, I felt like I was trying to replace Johnny Carson, but it was fun. A couple <laughs> of folks called in and made my job really a lot easier. But, oh, that's you know, nice. I don't know much about stocks. Can you tell the folks here, I've got three questions here all about Goldman Sachs on why it's down so much today. Do you have any information have on that at all? I have absolutely no clue as to why Goldman is down. Uh, it's certainly down a lot. Uh, and, and certainly it's part of, of the Dow. But I, what I thought I'd do is this. Um, just take the opportunity to show just a couple of basic techniques that I use uh, because they all unfolded today <clears throat> or are unfolding as we speak. So if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so I always look. Uh, let me just go to this. Yeah, this shows the patterns. I always try to identify the low bar and then try to gauge. I set essentially weigh or measure or assess in terms of the increment that each higher peak has been made, I alphabetize them and each peak gets an alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven peaks higher, but it's the fourth peak that really makes the difference. My objective is always to get subscribers to from a buy signal to a buy mode which says you should go to at least four higher peaks, peak D. So with that in mind, let me just show you something here. The Dow <clears throat> made a peak D on the uh, 13th of January at 34,342 uh, and then pulled back sharply and then made yet another rally with a peak D just under the previous high and has pulled back quite sharply. So that's one technique, the fourth highest peak. The other technique is I like to look at rectangles and the rectangles, if I can just get this, there it is. So the rectangles are either narrow rectangles, a long, narrow rectangle. My expression is a long, narrow rectangle can last a lot longer than your patience because it keeps going to the top mm -hmm. and you think it's going to break out and instead it comes back down and then you think it's going to break down and you think, oh, this is it, it's going to plunge and it doesn't until much later on. And then it just pops out of the top enough to fool you because it turns around and then it takes out the mid midpoint of the rectangle along, uh, you can see just a little bit here on the left side, that's the Dow. That was the midpoint that I said is absolutely key to holding this particular pattern because if it takes that out, not only could it test the low of the rectangle, but it could go lower. Then I also have another rectangle called the large rectangle. So here you are, here's the one that turned into a narrow rectangle, lasted a lot longer, now we've broken down in the daily. This middle one is the weekly chart. <clears throat> There's your large rectangle formation, and it's producing, I like to look at three patterns. Uh, basic patterns are, let me just get this right here, straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, or an arch formation, or a mix of one and two and one and three. The arch, I always make red, because if you take out that left side, oh, I call it the dreaded H. If it goes only to peak A or B and then fails, it can go a lot lower. Well, look at this. We've got in the... Uh, weekly chart, we've gone to peak A, and another peak A in the arch formation, and now we're about to test the lower part of the rectangle. So those are all patterns that we look at. And if you look at even intraday, uh, look at this. Here's the narrow rectangle in the one-minute chart from about one o'clock. We stayed in a very narrow range, sp spiked to just above the, the rectangle high, and then finally went plunging to the bottom and took it out. Then went sideways again made an H pattern, they went to a lowercase h, uh, M pattern, and then broke down. So these are patterns that I look at all the time, and you can see in the 10-minute chart, we went, look at this, the same thing. I think we're, we're always looking at um, sine wave with a cup going to an arch, then a cup and an arch, and here we are. Here's your arch formation, here's your cup formation, failed at a peak E, failed at a peak F, and now we're coming down and we're testing. I drew this in. I like to do left side, right side, price, time match. That's called symmetry, where the number of bars on the upside or downside equal the exact number of bars going to back to that same place. And here we are on the right. So I thought I'd show that. And then two weeks ago, when you actually interviewed me, when you were sitting in for uh, Tom, I was about to show you this, but we, I, I, I just decided that there was too much going on. But I wanted to say to you, 
that we were making a peak D in my, you remember I, the, the fourth highest peak is alphabetized, A, B, C, D is the fourth highest. This is completely different to your A to B equals C to D. This is just counting the peaks. Look, we made a peak D in wheat. This is a continuous contract in December. Pull back sharp, we made a cup formation. Now we're making an arch formation um, at a peak D and we're pulling back and we've broken the support. And you can see here in the weekly chart, look at that arch formation. Look at the beautiful uh, bar symmetry, held it, tried to rally, and it's failed. So I thought I'd just show you some of the patterns in my show tomorrow in the Tiger Technicians out. I'll do some more if anybody's interested in these particular patterns. But what's interesting, you were talking about gold, and have a look at this. This is dust. This is, I think, two times, I've never actually traded dust, two times short gold. And look how it's, uh, yeah, short gold. Look, it went to a peak D, and it's pulled back right at the uh, at at this peak D and the DZZ, which is a terrible vehicle because it has a very low volume, is the um, DB Gold Double Short ETN. It went right to the 200 period moving average and stalled at this peak D. So I thought I'd just show you a couple of the techniques that I like to use. And as yeah. you say, you can do the work and you you just let the price unfold and either confirm or unconfirm what you're thinking. Uh, Basil, I got a, ch a question for you. You, do you. you don't stay in front of the machine all day long, do you? I hate to say it, uh, Larry, but I think that uh, I, um, I'm i kind of glued to the machine. I, I, I just, I, I, <laughs> okay. I love, hey, that, that's I tell right. you why. Let me explain why. Because I, I follow moving averages. And you oh, can yes. see, exactly. because of that, I need to be there. I don't have to be trading all the time. In fact, I do a lot of other things. But my eye is on it all the time. Look, when this nine period moving average crossed negative right here on the one minute chart at 254, and the price was at about 393, since then it's been pink and it's been down, and that's what I follow. So I just need to follow my indicators. I don't have to do anything because once I'm in the trade, you know, I'm in the trade. But yes, I do. And not only that, I find that for me, that, that's the excitement, learning all these different techniques. A lot of these techniques I, I consider proprietary. I, I discovered them, <laughs> the school of hard knocks, then you go to the graduate school of hard knocks, <laughs> then you get to the postgraduate school of hard knocks. So, <laughs> so I know those I, schools. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I love it. I feel it just it keeps me invigorated. It keeps me thinking. I, I, I do it for a different reason. I don't do it because I'm glued to it because I, I'm I, addicted to it in that sense. But I do it because I need to follow it because at any point this nine period moving average could turn around and start moving up and then I'm out the trade. So look at this. It just, this keeps you in the trade longer than you would anticipate. As long as you can get in the trade correctly, okay. put in your yeah. stops, it can keep you there. And that I find is really important. Well, you're a master at using those, my friend. I've never seen anybody do it any better than you do. So uh, that's they, the they, school they, of hard knocks, graduate yeah, school, postgraduate right. school well, of hard knocks. My, my <laughs> school was tough. I was in the third grade for five years, but I finally got through. Thanks for joining us, <laughs> Basil.